What is going on guys? We are back and today we're going to be starting a brand new Surviving With series, which is going to be Surviving With Ender.io. Now it's no surprise that Ender.io has been pretty much the most highly requested mod that I cover in a Surviving With series, considering it's in essentially every mod pack, probably 75% of builds will involve it in some way, and that's most likely going to be using conduits, considering Ender.io is essentially the staple for moving items and power, and sometimes fluids, but mostly items and power, using the conduit system. Unfortunately though, a lot of people don't know that Ender.io has a ton of pretty awesome things that it offers that kind of get overlooked when people just come to it for the conduits, and that's it. So in this series, we're going to cover everything from the basics, including conduits, to some of the more advanced stuff, some pretty awesome mob spawning techniques, which I just recently learned about that I think are pretty frequently overlooked, all that good stuff. Uh, there are a couple changes that are going to be made to the Surviving Wiss series though, and I guess I can cover those now before we actually jump into the basics today, but a lot of you might have seen my previous Surviving Wiss series, in which I kind of play through the game, obviously it's in survival, showing how the mod can be used in the logical progression of it, but uh, a lot of the time I treat it more like a let's play than a tutorial, and now because we've got the Hermit Pack series, which is a mod pack playthrough and an actual let's play, the Surviving Wiz series is going to be a little bit more of a concise tutorial, still going through survival, but not going to be as long in terms of the video times or anything like that, and hopefully we're not going to ramble as much and talk about random things, so if you want to get the information, you can come to these videos, and you can still get some rage time, but if you want to see a little bit more just me being me, then you can feel free to go and check out the Hermit Pack videos, but that's just a little bit of housekeeping that needs to be taken care of in the first video. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, we can jump into what we're going to be doing today, which is going over all the basic stuff and how to get started with Ender.io. So the first thing we need is going to be power, and that is going to come from the Sterling Generator. It's going to be able to burn essentially the same stuff that a furnace can, any solid fuel that the furnace can burn, and it's going to give you power for that. So we need to make that. It's very, very simple to make. We're going to be using five stone bricks, one furnace, a piston, and two basic gears. And the recipe for the basic gears, just four cobblestone and four sticks. So we can grab that out and we can craft this up really quick. So there we go. We've got the Sterling generator. Now I'm going to be putting it down right over here. Keep in mind with the setup that we're doing today, you're going to want to put it down if you don't have any conduits or any way to transport power. You're going to want to put it down where there's a space to the left and a space to the right. You could do it with the space above and below, really anything like that. You just need two sides of it to have open space for other machines to be put down. But if we look at the Sterling generator, you can see it's currently generating at zero RF per tick. Obviously, we've got nothing in there. It's got a burn rate monitor. You can put the items in right in the center here. It's got the same uh, kind of look as a furnace would. And then on the left, you're going to have... Uh, this part right here, which will tell how much RF per tick it can output and the storage it's going to have. So this is going to be able to be altered by the section right below it down in this bottom left hand corner, which is the upgrade slot. Now there's different capacitors that you can put in here and capacitors can be put in any Ender IO machine essentially that has an upgrade slot, which I believe actually is any Ender IO machine that has a function to it. Um, and you have the double layer capacitor and the octatic capacitor. And what these are going to do is essentially upgrade the efficiency in a couple different ways that differ a little bit from machine to machine. And we'll cover each one individually, but that's a little bit of a brief overview of capacitors. We'll get a little bit more in depth later when we actually use them. We're not going to use them just yet though, because we can't actually make them, but this is where the upgrades will go. Now for the Sterling generator, the upgrades are going to increase the energy storage. So the double layer will set it to 200,000 RF. It's going to essentially change the fuel burn rate from 2 to 1.25. So it's a significant decrease in the fuel burn rate, which will help increase the efficiency, and it will allow it to output 40 RF per tick instead of 20. So it's an all around relatively good upgrade, but then if you go up to the octatic capacitor, it's going to change it to a 1 million RF internal storage. It's going to change the burn rate down to one instead of two. So it's gonna cut the fuel burn rate in half and then on top of that, it's going to change the output to 80 RF per tick. So you can make some big strides to upgrade this, but I'm pretty sure that by the time you could get the octatic capacitor, you will not be using this generator, so I wouldn't really concern yourself with that. So what we can do now is come over here, and I've got a fair bit of coal. We can grab some of the coal out, we can throw it in here, and we can let it start going. So the burn rate is currently 100%, generating 20 RF per tick, and you can see the internal power is going up at a decent rate. 
and it doesn't really burn through this too fast. Obviously, if you were to put upgrades in there, it would be even slower, but it even tells you how much it's going to generate. So each piece of coal generates 16,000 RF at 20 RF per tick. So it does take a fair bit of time, but you get a decent amount of power and you probably won't be stuck using this setup, at least non-upgraded, for a significant chunk of time. So the next thing that we are going to worry about now that we're getting a little bit of power coming in is going and using that power and we're going to be making the sag mill in the alloy smelter. Now these two things are going to offer a lot of functionality so we'll discuss that in a little bit once we've created them but they're pretty easy to make. So the first one we are going to make is going to be the sag mill. Now this one requires three flint to make four iron a piston and a machine chassis. So if we look at this, this is kind of the most annoying part to make. It requires four iron bars, four iron ingots, and then a basic capacitor, which is going to require five gold nuggets and two redstone. I believe if you're playing in a mod pack that involves copper, this middle gold nugget is actually going to be copper uh, ingot, but unfortunately we are playing with just ender IO. So we're just going to be using gold nuggets threw me for a little bit of a loop when I saw this considering I'm so used to playing with it when you have the ability to use copper, but it's a little bit, a little bit of a change up, not too much of an issue though. So we're going to grab all this stuff out right here and we can throw that in and make it. So we got the sag mill. There we go. And if we look at the description, it grinds ores and other items. Uh, you have the ability to add a grinding ball, which we will discuss and you can upgrade it again with capacitors. So we're going to put this one down. Oh, that is definitely not where we wanted it to go. Uh, we're going to put this one down on the side of it just so that we get power transfer to it considering we don't have conduits yet. And you can see the internal buffer for this is going to be 100,000 RF. But you can also put upgrades into this one too. Now the upgrades for these are just going to increase uh, the efficiency of it in terms of the time it's going to take for the actual function to happen. At the beginning, the function should be about 10 seconds to grind down whatever you're using. And as you add the upgrades to it, it will increase the efficiency and the internal storage in the same way that it did with the Sterling generator. Uh, now, another option we have is this area right over here. It's on the right side. That is going to be where the grinding ball goes. Now, there's two options for grinding balls that are offered specifically by Ender IO, and that is going to be Flint, which might actually seem a little bit weird. It's not technically a grinding ball. It doesn't really have that in the name, but Flint can go in there and work a little bit less effectively than a dark steel ball would, which is another grinding ball that's offered by Ender IO. Now these things essentially will increase your efficiency. They will make the output of the machine better, um, but I'll discuss a little bit of specifics. So the dark steel ball will increase the main output of the machine. So just whenever you grind anything down the guaranteed output by 150%, and then it will, the bonus output will get changed to 200%. And by that, the bonus output is essentially just when you're grinding something down, you have a chance to get some additional stuff. And by adding the grinding ball, it goes up even more. So that's going to go up to 200%. And then it decreases the power usage by 30%. So it actually will save you a fair bit of power. The flint will go in there. And of course, it's cheaper, so it's going to be a little bit less effective. It'll increase the main output by 120%. It'll increase the bonus output to 125%. And the power usage will go down by 15%. So if it's at all possible, you want to have a pretty steady stream of flint going in there. I've got three just to throw in there right now to show you. So it's going to go in that slot right there. And uh, you can actually hold shift over it to see all the information that I just said. And it's like it looks like that. It's a sag mill grinding ball, even though the other one, if we look at it, which should be right here, a dark steel ball, is a little bit more like a grinding ball. This is just kind of flint. I guess I'm going to grind it against. Not really a ball, though, so I guess it's kind of weird. But we can get an example of this. I've saved a fair bit of my ores right now uh, to process them because I want to double them or do more than that considering we get additional output with the flint in there. So we're going to throw some iron in there. And if we do that, we'll throw it in there. And this should take a little bit of time for the process to actually happen. It'll go all the way down. And once it finishes, we will get to see that some of the flint will be consumed. So you can see it took one of the flint. We now have 99% of that left because the process happened. Now we're at 93, steadily going down as each process happens. So right there, you could see that we got four iron powder from that. The other one gave us two. And if we look at the recipe list, you can actually click and see show recipes. It's great because it's actually got a button on the side of it that will allow you to do that. So we can see all these recipes. You can grind down some random stuff here. Not super important, but if you go, you can turn the sandstone into sand. Now this is the guaranteed output. And then you can see over here that this sand output is the additional output with a chance of 40%. So that is the added output that gets the bonus chance when you add a grinding ball to it. 
and you can scroll through here and see all of the different ones that you can get and as you can see it makes a very big difference having a grinding ball there so it's very important that you do that if you want to maximize the output that you're going to be getting so we can let this finish you can see we got some additional output of cobblestone there not something super special but you know it's why not it's great to have um, the capacitors can go in here like I said we're not gonna worry about those just yet so the next thing we are going to make is going to be the alloy smelter which is essentially the powered furnace of ender IO but not only does it work as a powered furnace it does a lot more than that and I actually don't know if we can find it in here so I'm probably just gonna search it up instead of randomly looking around for it but if we look it is right Oop, it is right here so the alloy smelter is used to create ender io alloys can also be used as a powered furnace again can be upgraded with capacitors to increase speed and energy storage now this one requires three furnaces and that's not just a random number it can actually cook down multiple things at once the process will take a little bit longer but if you put you know let's say three cobblestone in there it'll take all three of those and it'll cook them down into three stone at the same time um, so just a little interesting tidbit so it's going to take four iron ingots three furnaces a machine chassis and a cauldron so it's a fair bit of iron to make this but obviously it's going to allow you to finish doubling your ores with power or even more than doubling i guess you could say between doubling and tripling but we're going to throw these in there right now and we can pull it out so again this is going to go on any of the sides of this machine we'll just put it on the right side here it'll start getting power should get full amount of power because this is already maxed out on its internal buffer again this one is going to get the exact same benefits from the capacitors in terms of increasing the internal storage and increasing the speed it's just pretty universal in terms of even the numbers the exact numbers between the alloy smelter and the sag mill not so much from the uh, sterling generator across the rest of them I believe these go 100,000 200,000 500,000 and the energy usage for these actually goes up so it's going to go up from 20 RF per tick to 40 RF per tick to 100 RF per tick uh, I think it's 20 to 40 at 100 it might be 20 to 4 or 20 to 60 to 100 um, not actually positive on that yeah actually it is 20 to 60 to 100 and then it goes uh, 100,000 200,000 500,000 for the internal storage for these so um, just a little information for you on that it's not super crucial considering we're not going to get to the capacitors yet but what we can do now is take this stuff from over here so the iron powder and we can take the cobblestone if we really want to we can throw it in here and as you can see we had 24 now it's down to 21 I believe this process should take 10 seconds um, it'll cook it down and it'll drop it out here again we've got recipes on the side that we can look at a lot of different recipes considering there's a lot of different uh, you know kind of things you can cook down specific to ender IO whether it's alloys or you know you'll see we've got the vibrant alloy uh, redstone alloy a lot of different alloys a lot of different things you can cook down that you will eventually need but then again you can also use it as a regular furnace now certain things that annoy people would be if you're cooking down glass for example ender IO has a specific type of glass that has the same recipe as regular glass so if you want to get one or the other there's this button right here now it's in furnace mode which you can see kind of shows a regular furnace kind of shows the alloy smelter but if you were to click now it's only the alloy smelter mode now it's only the furnace mode and if you click again now it's both I prefer to keep it on both considering it allows you to cook down vanilla stuff and it also allows you to cook down you know any of the ender IO alloys you might need and that's what we're going to cook down right now so we'll grab this ender or we'll grab the iron powder out of here we'll let it finish with what it's doing and we'll come over and we will grab some iron ingots and some redstone because what we're going to be doing now if we look at the use for iron and I guess this is kind of a bad idea but we can look through here um, it is going to be making conductive iron because this is going to be the first thing we need to actually make a conduit that's going to allow us to transport energy it might be the lowest tier but really all we need now is to make it so that we can hook everything up to our sterling generator and kind of you know automate some of these processes to make it a little bit easier so what we're going to do is we can grab out the iron we can put it in there and we can put the redstone in there and it will start cooking them down one at a time quite a lengthy process to do this but we've got other stuff to take care of while we make the conductive iron so the next thing we need to do is make whatever we're going to use for the rest of the conduits so if we search up conduits and we click on the energy conduit which will have a max output of 640 rf per tick which is perfectly suitable for the time being we need the three conductive iron and then we need six conduit binders and that gets us eight energy conduits so we only need eight right now we actually probably won't even use all eight of them so we're fine with the conductive iron now we need the conduit binder the 
conduit binder, you get two of them from each binder composite. And you get this from gravel, sand, and clay, which is why I've gathered a ton of it. I believe it's pretty much the same stuff you'd use to make grout if you're making Tinker's Construct uh, stuff, if you're making the smeltery. So, probably should already have enough of it if you're doing that, if you're playing this in a mod pack, as I suspect you probably are. So, we're going to make this right now. We can just click back through. We get eight of these, so you get per craft 16 conduit binder. Doesn't really work out perfectly in terms of, you know, using all of it. You're going to have four left over after two um, different times of using it for different conduits. But when this finishes, we can throw the binder composite in there and we can allow it to cook down. Now, once this one set finishes, since it's cooking down three right now, unlike when it cooked down the conductive iron, we'll be getting six of them out and we can actually start using our conduits and finish things up here and kind of make everything look nice. So we'll get our conduits out and we can go back and craft this. So the conductive iron in the center, conduit binder here, conduit binder here, and boom, there we have our energy conduits. Uh, the next tier is going to be much, much better in terms of the output. And you can actually upgrade the current tier once we actually need to do that. But, you know, it's really not a waste to make a bunch of these. If you plan on upgrading them in the future, it's relatively easy to just break them like you can see here and substitute them for an energetic alloy in the future. So don't worry if you make a ton of these. Uh, it's really not that much of an issue. They're not going to go to waste. But what we can do now is take this sterling generator. We can break it and we can put it on the far side of this little area in here right there. And then we can take the alloy smelter, which is still working. We can break that and put it back over here. So these are right next to each other. Now, obviously, we could just put this right here and make it a little bit closer so we wouldn't use up the conduits. But we'll save this space for a machine later. And we can just put these conduits down right up here. So this is going to allow power to be transported. Unlike the item conduits, you don't really need to worry about clicking on them um, and accessing their mode. Right now they're in in and out mode, which is perfectly fine. This obviously is giving off power. This is not going to be accepting power. So it doesn't really matter that they're in in and out, but you have the option to set it to extract, insert or disable it altogether. If you don't want it hooking up to a machine, you have the ability to set it on a redstone mode so you can make it active with a signal, active without, never active and always active. This is actually pretty useful considering eventually we'll discuss using a power monitor and you'll be able to make it so that you only are generating power when you need power. So you're not really wasting any, anything like that. And then you have different signal colors so you can change that. And by doing that, you can set it so it'll only go to certain machines um, and not all of the ones that are currently hooked up. So pretty awesome. We'll just make sure we change that back to the red color that it was at. And we'll discuss this later with item conduits where it gets a little bit more complicated with accessing them, but pretty much it's just going to hook up to these machines and bring it over here. And now both of these are going to receive power from this. We'll be able to cover these conduits up too in a later episode. You can make a facade using this conduit binder, but we're not going to worry about that now. I believe that's actually probably going to be it for today, guys. Like I said earlier, the videos are going to be a little bit shorter because we're not going to be rambling. We're not going to be doing building. We're just going to get to the information and that's going to be that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like and let me know in the comments what you think of the new plan for the series. I know a lot of people probably won't be super excited, you know, that people that frequently watch my videos won't be super excited for this because almost everybody already knows about this stuff in Ender IO. Some of the later videos might be more interesting, but uh, this stuff is pr pretty basic stuff, but there's new people coming into modded Minecraft every day that need to learn about this, so I thought it'd be useful to make sure we cover it. And then in the future, we'll be getting to the more fun, entertaining stuff in here, like using, you know, the different obelisks, things like that, using the, you know, I guess there's some new storage stuff in here if we actually look at it. We can take a quick look at this right now since, you know, everyone else can click off. There's no more information in today's episode, but there's some, it looks like there's some uh, storage stuff where you can, you know, actually do some interesting things. So we'll be covering that later, but for today, that's going to be it guys. Hopefully you enjoy the video and I will talk to you later.